What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Professor Anime and welcome back to another video. In today's video, everyone, I am here to bring you all my review for the weekly JoJo's Bizarre Adventure episode review. And in today's review, we are covering JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, Episode 23. So without further ado, let's get started. So in this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the spotlight is mainly focused on Koichi and Jotaro as the two of them try to figure out a way on how exactly they can take on one of Kira's stands. Now, Kira has one stand, of course, uh, but it has like two parts to it. We see from the last week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that uh, he can send out his you know, stand called Deadly Queen. However, there's also a second part to his stand that is called Heart Attack, which we see in this episode. And Heart Attack is kind of like this little toy tank-like contraption that basically, if it ends up touching you, you will blow up. What was kind of cool about this episode is that from the first part, we saw that Koichi and Jotaro, you know, are trying to figure out how exactly they can take on Heart Attack, but, you know, they don't really know exactly how to go about it, and Koichi starts getting worked up, you know, because he wants to help out Jotaro, but Jotaro is basically telling Koichi that you need to keep your stand by you at all times, just in case, you know, if something ends up happening to you. What if, you know, uh, the stand ends up coming at you? You won't be able to defend yourself. Koichi does not listen to Jotaro. He's like, you're just, you know, saying all this from experience. You think that you can take on this stand because you've encountered these many stands and what does Koichi do you know he ends up you know not really uh obliging to Jotaro's commands so he ends up having his reverb act 2 end up coming out and it ends up uh locating the location for Kira however Koichi cannot go after Kira because of the fact that uh, his stand has a 50 mile or 50 meter radius so he cannot go after Kira. So what does this do in turn? It basically has Jotaro have to defend Koichi and because of this Jotaro almost ends up getting killed. We see that the stand heart attack ends up leaping out towards Koichi and it is drawing closer to him and at this given point in time we know that Koichi is completely vulnerable because his stand is away from him and actually somewhere else. So what does Jotaro have to do? Jotaro has to end up using Zawardo in order to save Koichi and how he ends up doing this is uh, by actually creating a fire and uh, Jotaro ends up finding out that uh, the enemy stand will always go after the highest amount of heat residing in the area before it ends up attacking uh, the enemy. So he ends up creating a fire in the room and ends up saving Koichi's life because before the uh, uh, the uh, stand was actually going to go after Koichi but it ended up redirecting its position towards the fire. Sadly in the process we see that Jotaro gets severely injured by this so due to Koichi's actions Jotaro ends up getting the shit end of the stick so to speak and he is almost on the verge of death he is unconscious he's completely bloodied up so at this point in time we have it to where Koichi has to fend for the both of them as he drags Jotaro uh, you know to the back room of the shop and Koichi also ends up you know keeping uh, Jotaro's uh, analysis on the enemy stand uh, as well as he starts to light up the room as you know all the lights are starting to go on the stand is going to the light first because of the you know heat that is you know resonating from you know the light bulbs and everything before it actually goes after Koichi and Jotaro but what was really cool about this episode is something about Koichi's development 
Koichi, I swear, is probably the main protagonist of Part 4 of JoJo. I mean, so many episodes are really showing the focus on Koichi. I mean, I know that he isn't really the main, main character. He's one of the main characters, but it just feels like he is the main, main character when it comes to Part 4 of JoJo because, you know, the episodes just showcase him a lot and through his development, more so than I would say Josuke, but... You know, I guess that's why, you know, in these last few episodes, we have also been seeing more from Josuke as well. And we will most likely see more of Josuke later on as the coming episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure come out. But as I was saying, what really interests me about Koichi's development this episode is not only what he went through in order to protect Jotaro and also himself, but was how he ended up, you know, fending for himself in the process. I mean, we have it to where this stand, Heart Attack, ends up blowing up the store, part of the store, excuse me, and Koichi, his back literally rip opens, and you can see the blood oozing from his back, and he's just like, oh shit, am I, am I about to die? And then he sees Reverb Act 2 supposedly dead, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute, something's odd here. You know, you think your stand is dead, but you're not dead because we know from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure if your stand dies, you die in the process and Koichi is still alive and Koichi says this as well. And then as I took a closer look at Reverb Act 2, I was like, oh, you know what? It's shedding its skin. It's evolving, so to speak. And that is when we see Reverb Act 3 end up coming about and we see that Koichi now tries to take on uh, Heart Attack by using his new, you know, evolved stand, which is really cool because this shows the growth of Koichi. You know, now he has unlocked a new potential to his stand. We don't really know exactly as far as how, you know, what his newfound uh, Reverb Act 3 ends up doing. We just know from Reverb Act 1 and Reverb Act 2 what it does, but even he doesn't know what Reverb Act 3, uh, you know, is capable of either. So we're kind of just like left guessing at this moment in time as to how exactly uh, the uh, stand abilities for Reverb Act 3 end up going about. But from what we saw, by the end of this episode is that apparently I guess maybe Reverb Act 3 has the potential to basically put weight on the enemy like using gravitational force and like pushing you know the given object or person down and keeping them down so to speak like entrapping the enemy and we see that's what goes on when we see that the stand heart attack ends up being pushed to the ground even further and it cannot you know, move whatsoever, and even Kira, because of the fact that Kira is using this stand, he is affected by this as well, as he is at, you know, the cafe shop, and his arm just completely goes down to the ground, you know, and there was also that one scene where he tries to get back up and gets help from one of the uh, waiters there, but then, again, the, you know, gravitational force is being pulled, you know, uh, down, and his arm ends up just you know, just going down to the ground and ripping off of the clothes of the waiter. And it, he said, I believe, that it's almost as if 50 or 60 kilos are being pulled, you know, or being held onto his arm, so to speak. So, you know, when it comes to Reverb Act 3, we don't really know much about the stand, but from what it seems like, it, it seems like it could be a pretty you know, awesome, you know, uh, power, because it can basically ensnare the enemy and entrap them. So yeah, as I stated before, I don't really know much about Reverbed Act 3 and as far as what it is capable of, I don't really know if what I have said in this review about, you know, its power is actually true or not, but I'm pretty sure you manga readers know exactly what I am talking about and what, you know, it could really be, but as far as what I've stated in this review, it's all off of speculation and I don't really know if it is, you know, concrete or not, but uh, please let me know exactly as to far if my theory is right, but if I am wrong, 
please do not spoil me. Please do not spoil me because I really want to experience the greatness that is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure to the fullest without any spoilers. And I'm pretty sure other people do not want to be spoiled on that as well. So, with that said... That is about it for the review, and I cannot wait for, you know, these next few episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, because when it came to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part uh, 4, I, I kind of felt like JoJo was becoming a little stale as, you know, it was mainly just sort of like an episodic sort of, you know, episode when it came to Part 4. Uh, but, you know, as these coming episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure have been coming out, they've been getting more hype and more hype, you know, now that the killer, Kira, has finally been revealed and we're going to spend, you know, the next 10 or so episodes on his character. So that's going to be pretty exciting to see. But yeah, I got to ask you guys something really quick that I'm very interested in and hopefully you all will be as well. When it comes to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, okay, do you all want to see live reactions or or reviews for this series. I mean, basically, you know, up until now, I have been doing reviews on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I mean, I have done a you know a live reaction here and there, maybe like two of them when it can when it comes to uh, this season of JoJo. But I really want to know since now that Kira has been introduced and now that you know uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Four is going to get more heated up as, you know, it's kind of like going to become a bloodbath now, I guess, from what people are saying. Do you all want to see, you know, live reactions for that, a Google Hangouts live stream? Because I'll be down for that, but if you guys want to uh, keep seeing reviews of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, I'll do that as well. So please, let me know if you want me to do live reactions or reviews for the next coming episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So yeah, I think that about does it for the review. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do live reactions or reviews for the coming episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And also, what did you think about this episode? Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It always helps out the channel. And if you want to stick up to date to my future content on this channel and see more anime and manga reviews from me, then hit that red subscribe button below and you will never miss a video from me. That about does it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.